Ladies and gentlemen, we take you now by transcription behind the scenes of a police headquarters in a great American city where under the cold, glaring lights will pass before us the innocent, the vagrant, the thief, the murderer. This is the lineup. Ketchum? Yeah, I'm Mr. Ketchum. Uh, Lieutenant Guthrie. Uh, glad to meet you. Any trouble finding the place? Oh, no. I booked here once for being drunk a year ago last Christmas it was. I know the place all right. Ain't changed at all. Too much disinfectant. Smell it everywhere. <laughs> uh, think you got him, huh? I don't know for sure. And the license number I gave you. I was right, wasn't I? Yeah, we'll see. Want a smoke? Oh, thanks. May I have your Let attention, me. please? Little people out there, the yeah, side thanks. of the wire in the audience room, may I have your attention, please? Thank you. My name is Cogger, Sergeant Pete Cogger. I'll explain the lineup to you. Each of the suspects you will see will be numbered. I'll call off a number, their name and charge. If you have any questions or identifications, please remember the number assigned to the prisoner as I call his name. At the end of each line, when I ask for questions or identifications, call out the number. If you're sure or not too sure of the suspect, have him mailed. Questions I ask these suspects are merely to get a natural tone of voice, so do not pay too much attention to their answers as they often lie. All right, bring on the line. All the way to the end of the stage, boys. That's it. Now turn and face the front. Eyes straight ahead. Talk up in a good loud voice so the people in the back of this room can hear you. Number one, Gerald Vanek, assault. Up to the center. Where do you live, Gerald? In 3756 Mariposa Street. What's your profession? I drive a truck, huh? I'm a trucker. Don't look at me, look out there. Oh. Any weapons on you when you were picked up? In, no. You own a car? Yeah. What make? Coupe, sedan, what? A 47 packet black sedan. What's the matter with your ear? It got cut. How? In a fight, somebody clouded me with an ashtray. You taking good care of you, Gerald? Oh, sure, sure. All right, slide on down. Number two, Robert Prey, burglary. Robert Prey. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Come on, hustle it up. Where do you live, Robert? Uh, Ashland Avenue. It's 913, I think. Haven't you lived there very long? No, I just slept there the one night. It's a hotel, sort of. Where'd you come from? Well, Topeka, Kansas. What kind of work do you do? A painter. Sometimes I do a carpenter. Any weapons? Oh, yes, gun, revolver. What's the caliber and make? Come on, Robert. Well, you make me kind of nervous. I'm just trying to think. It's, um... 38? Uh, yeah. Smith and Wesson? Uh-huh. Well, is it chrome or blue steel? Can you remember that? Blue steel. <laughs> Thank you. Well, you're welcome, sir. Go on, move. Number three, Edward Franklin. Open charge. Give us your address, Edward. 213 West 18th Avenue. Your business? Construction work. I do steel work, mostly. How long you been in town? Just a week, ten days, maybe. You own a car? Yeah, 46 Buick Cedar Net. It's maroon, but it's back in Pittsburgh. I haven't got it here. Any weapons on you when you were picked up? No, no, nothing like that. What's your weight? 238. Get back against the wall, there. I'm six, three and a half. Just against the wall, huh? Uh, Lieutenant? Hmm? Yeah. Okay. The big boy stays right there on the, the stage. Uh, Get are you sure? Sure. Are you sure? Am I taking them uh, off? Sergeant Cogger. Uh, yes, sir. Number three, hold for interrogation. And uh, tell us what you were doing out at the quarry last night. What was I doing? You know what I was doing out there, Lieutenant. Tell us again. I rented a car to take a look at this town. I thought I might like to work around here, so I just drove around yesterday, that's all. I happened to turn the car around when I got out by the quarry. That was about 8 o'clock, was it? No, it was almost 10, you know that. Where'd you drive? Oh, just around, all over. And do you remember any of the other streets you were on? No, not by name. One of them, a lot of driving theaters along the way. Uh Uh-huh. You uh, rented the car day before yesterday, is that right? Yeah. About three in the afternoon? Yeah. Why'd you rent a Cadillac in? Huh? You could have rented a Ford for $10 a day. Cadillac costs 15 Why? 
What do you mean, why? Well, $15 a day to look around a new city when you could do it for 10 Seems funny, that's all. I just wanted the caddy, that's all. Nothing funny about that. You had the Cadillac last night and the night before. Where'd you go the night before? Nowhere. I stayed home. And that cad was sitting out there costing you 15 bucks? Yeah, I can afford it. You didn't go anywhere that night? No. But you went out last night? Out looking around, yeah. What time did you leave your apartment? Late in the afternoon, four or five. Why didn't you look around in the daytime, Ed? Because I wanted to look around at night. Uh, after you finished driving around, did you go right home? Yeah. You didn't stop in anywhere? No. How about a drink? You have a drink somewhere along the line? No, I just said no. You're driving around town for five hours. Did you meet anybody? Talk to anybody in that time? No. Now, let me see. You've told us that you came in town from Pittsburgh ten days ago. You took a fairly expensive apartment, and later on, you rented a pretty nice car. That's right. What are you doing here, Ed? Looking. Just looking. I might want to live here. You don't know anyone here? No. Nearly everybody has some kind of reason for pulling up stakes and starting in another place. Well, I didn't. I just grabbed a plane in Pittsburgh and came here. Left my car and all my things there. If I decide to stay, I'll send for them. Why'd you leave Pittsburgh? I got fed up. You got fired, didn't you? Huh? You worked for the General Mayor Construction Company there, didn't you? Yeah, for five years. And they fired you two weeks ago. Isn't that the story? That's not the story at all. I quit. Look, Ed, a witness saw you drive up to the quarry edge last night and take a body out of your car. He says you threw it in the quarry and then drove away. Sure. You're identified as the driver of the car. Now, we want to get all the facts we can, clear this up one way or another. It's going to help you and it's going to help us. Now, what happened in Pittsburgh? Well, this guy was working for me. I was foreman, you know. He had a lot of lip. Big man. Not as big as me, but big. Full of talk. Real good with the ladies. He got on my nerves one day, and I let him have it. You mean you hit him? Yeah. Five teeth right across the front. Cost me $600 for dental work. The man didn't press charges? He knew better. Hmm. Your wife living in Pittsburgh now, Ed? I haven't got a... Oh, my ex... Yeah, I guess so. I didn't see her much after we broke up. She charged you with assault once, is that right? I didn't hit her, just slapped her. We never got along. Ed, do uh, you have any idea why our witness would tell us what he did? Why he'd say he saw you dump a man's body in the quarry? Why he'd take your license number and tell the police? No, he must be crazy seeing things. But you were alone in the car all that time you were driving around? All alone. All alone. For six hours or better. That's right. <sighs> okay, Ed. All through? For the time being. All right, Pete. Come on, Ed. Yeah. Yeah? Quine phoned in from the quarry. Anything in? Yeah. They found the body of a man. What do you say, Doc? Used the crane belonging to the sand company for the grappling hooks. After they found the body, the track slipped off. And now it's stuck. They're trying to dig it out. Looks like a mess. They'll get it out. He's over here. Found these things on him. Driver's license says his name's Alfred P. Hansen. 1132 Race Street. A ring, a watch, dollar fifty-three cents, cigarettes. Uh -huh. Hang on to him, Pete. Yeah. All right, Don, take it back. Oh. Pretty young. License was issued three years ago. He says he was 20 at the time. How long do you think he's been in the water? Mm, can't tell right now. Roughly 30, 40 hours. The rock was tied on just like that. A pretty good job of wiring. Yeah. Now, look up here. Mm? I figure he came over the side. No bruises on his body, no cuts or lacerations. You can see for yourself. Tell more when I get him downtown. Uh, any idea why? Mm, he's drowning all right. He was still alive when he went in. Oh? Uh -huh. Yeah, but somebody broke his back before that. Hello, 
Hello. Hello. Uh, does Alfred Paul Hansen live here? Yes. Yes, he does. I'm his sister, Mrs. Kelly. Well, we're police officers, Mrs. Kelly. We'd like to police? talk... Police? Oh, Lord. Is Al in trouble? Well, my name is Guthrie. This is Sergeant Cargo. Uh, may we come in, please? How do you do? What... Oh, well, yes, but I... I don't... Uh, is your husband in, Mrs. Kelly? No, he's in Buffalo. He travels. I don't expect him back until Wednesday. I see. Uh, but... we'd, uh, we'd like to check on a couple of things with you, Mrs. Kelly. Uh, when did you see your brother last? Last night at dinner. And uh, did he leave the house after dinner? Yes. Please tell uh, what me. What was he wearing? Why, uh, his tweed suit, I think. Has Al done something? Uh, did you report him missing? No. <laughs> no. Well, he's liable not to come home for two or three nights in a row. He stays with friends he has. That isn't it, is it? It may not be him, but uh, we'd like to have you come downtown with us and look at a body we... A body? Oh, no. All right, officers, I'll go. I know how hard it was for you to come down here and do this, Miss Kelly. I understand it had to be done. I know you had your job to do. Thank you, Miss Kelly. Now, uh, you last saw your brother at dinner time yesterday? Yes. Uh, what time was that? About six, I guess. He went out right after dinner. Did he walk or take the car? No. He walked. Can you remember if he had a phone call, made a date to meet someone? No. Any idea where he went? Did he say he was going to a movie or to a friend's house? No, he just said... Bye. <clears throat> now, whatever you can tell us is going to help us, Mrs. Kelly. I, I, I suppose you know some of his friends? Mm-hmm. He brought girls over to the house now and then. Boys he'd gone to school with or been in service with. Yes. Well, we'd like as many names as you can give us. Oh, Al had so many friends. Let's see. I guess one of his best friends is a boy named Bud Chisholm. Mm -hmm. You know his address? He lives with his family in Evanside. They have a big home there. And there's another boy, Borden Copeland. He lives in Everside, too. With his family? Yes. I don't know any of the addresses. I suppose they're in the phone book. Yes, we'll take care of that. Now, who else? Oh, Jack Didis. He lives quite near us, on Lafayette Street. D-I-D-D-I-S? Yes. That's all I can remember. If you contact uh, them... You, uh, you mentioned a girl... Oh, one he had over last week, Lucille. Uh, Lucille Malcolm. Sweet kid. Mm -hmm. Any other girls? And Nancy Follett. But she's in the West somewhere now. Uh, did your brother ever work or live in Pittsburgh? Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania? No. Did he ever mention a man named Ed Franklin? Ed Franklin? No. I don't think so. He might have a... Mm -hmm. Last night at dinner, did Al have a drink, maybe? No. The medical examiner tells us he had a drink or two somewhere last night. We thought maybe he had it at home. No. Well, uh, do you know some cocktail lounge where he'd go to have a couple of quiet drinks? You'll have to ask somebody else. I... I couldn't say. Sure, sure. Okay, Asher. Right. Inside, it. Miss Kelly, have you ever seen this man before? No, I don't think I have. He drives a Cadillac convertible. Do you ever come by the house? No, I'm quite sure. Okay. All right, Franklin, that's all. What's this all? Never about? mind, never mind. Well, thank you, Miss Kelly. Sergeant Cargill will take you home. Hi. Pete around? Down the hall, talking to some people he rounded up this morning. Hanson kids' friends? Yeah. We're checking them through R&I right now. Quine and Crockett covering the beer joints and taverns in the neighborhood. Mog sent over a picture. Nothing so far. Mm -hmm. Franklin's still sticking with it? <laughs> Harder than ever. <laughs> he doesn't know the kid, never saw him. Well, if we don't get something today, we'll go to work on him again. Yeah, 
Isn't going to be a cinch. What is? Okay, Jack. Hi. Morning, Ping. Ben, this is Jack Dittis, Lieutenant Guthrie, Jack. Hello. Sergeant Asher. Hi. Jack talked to Al on the phone the night he was killed. Oh? Well, tell us about it, son. Well, he called and asked me to meet him at a place we used to go to now and then, uh, the Midget Cafe. Yeah? I was right in the middle of dinner. Now, what time was this, do you know? Oh, about 8 o'clock, in and around there. He was talking from the phone booth. He'd been drinking a little bit. You mean he was drunk? No, no, just drinking. You know, a friend has a drink and you can tell it. Uh, why did he want you to meet him, Jack? Oh, well, he said he'd met a girl there. He didn't say who, and he only had a few dollars with him, and he didn't have any wheels. Um, he didn't have a car. He wanted me to come by and bring him some money and chauffeur them around. Well, I couldn't go, and I told him so, but well, he called again a little while later, and this time he said I had to come over, and I asked him why. Well, he, he said he thought he could get me in a good fight. You can see how big I am, and well, the guys are always doing that to me. Mm -hmm. A fight with who? Oh, I don't know. He, he said it was a guy he'd met there. Did you go over? Yes, I did. I got there about 10.30, but he wasn't there anymore, so well, I came on home. You say the name of this place is the Midget? Yeah. Yeah, it's easy to find. Just go out 43rd Street, about half a mile past the stone quarry. It's nice to be friendly when you find yourself in a strange country. But do you know where in the world you wouldn't walk up to someone on the street, say, got a light bud, and offer the man a cigarette? One place you most definitely wouldn't do that is in Saudi Arabia. In general, Saudis observe the customs of their religion, which forbid smoking. They are also forbidden to dance or to drink alcoholic beverages. If you are stationed in Saudi Arabia or are visiting there, you'd do well to remember something else if you happen to be a smoker. Tobacco is not used in government offices, nor in the presence of members of the royal family. By observing the customs of other countries, you make a friend for yours. Well, what's up, fellas? Routine. I'd like to talk to some of the people who were working here the night before last. Well, I was on from six to closing. Mm -hmm. What's your name? Uh, Dave Chrysler. <laughs> but they call me Fritzy. Uh, do you know a man named Al Hansen? No, I can't see you do. Edward Franklin? No. Here. Here, this is Hansen. Take a look. No. Mm -hmm. We heard he was in here night before last. Well, he might have been. I don't know. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I take it back. I, I served this guy myself. What's wrong with him in the picture there? Uh, what like time he... did he come in? Well, I don't know, but he, he sat right over there. Yeah, I remember that. Tell us what you can, will you? Well, there's nothing to tell. He come in, he had a few drinks, and he laughed. Oh, 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 oh. Thelma sat with him for a while. Yeah, yeah. You want to talk to her? Uh, sure. Where can we find Thelma? Well, she's the bar girl. Night before last, she was off, so she come in and she had a drink. Here, you want her? Yeah. Yeah, well, wait. Oh, Thelma! Thelma! All right. Yeah. Hey, Thelma, these two gentlemen are police officers. They, they want to talk to you. Oh, well, sure. Uh, you can go ahead with what you were doing. Mm. Oh, yeah, now, what's your full name, please? Thelma Lacey. Mm -hmm. Where do you live? 135 East 16th. Hey, what's the matter? Am I in trouble? Now, we're investigating a homicide. I understand you had a few drinks with Al Hansen night before last. Is that right? Al Hansen? <laughs> oh, Al. Is that his last name, Hansen? Yeah. This is Al Hansen, Miss Lacey. <laughs> oh, sure. He was killed night before last. The body was dumped in the stone quarry down the road. That nice kid. That nice kid. Um, would you like to go outside in the car and talk? Yeah. Yeah, it'd be better. Come on. Okay. Now, oh. how long have you known him? Well, I... I just met him the other night when he was in here. Mind telling us how you met him? Oh, he was just sitting there drinking by himself. He kept looking at me. I was talking to Fritzy, and, well, I went over and sat down, and we began talking. Made a couple of phone calls, trying to get a friend of his to come over with his car. Did this friend show up? Well, I don't know. I, I don't think so. 
Somebody I knew spoiled it. Well, how's that, Miss Lacey? Well, I... I know this man, sort of. I met him just the other night before. Ed Franklin's his name. He'd been wanting to take me out, and I wouldn't go out with him. He said he'd keep trying. Ed Franklin was in here that night? Yeah. Looking for me, I guess. Uh, Pete. Is this him? Why, yes. But what... How long did you say you've known him? Just one night when he was in here before. What happened? I mean, when he came in and you were sitting with Al Hansen. Well, he saw Al was just a nice kid, and Ed began throwing money around. Told us he was a big stock and bond man. <laughs> night before, he told me he was a lawyer. Neither of us believed what he said. He could tell we didn't believe him either. Al finally called him a phony, and Ed said he had a big Cadillac out in front that wasn't phony at all. Well, I took Al to one side and told him I'd like to have another drink with him, but he'd have to get rid of Ed somehow, or he'd ruin our whole evening. Al told me to pretend I had to go, and he'd meet me here later. The idea was that Ed was only buying drinks and hanging around to try and get me to go out with him. You wanted to be with Al? Sure. He wasn't any phony. He was real nice. Well, so I waited about five minutes, then I said I had to get home. Ed wanted to take me, but I said I had my own car. Instead of leaving, I just went around to the side and waited. Pretty soon, I saw Ed come out. Oh, was he alone? No, Al was with him. He was showing Al the Cadillac. Well, he had it all right, but he still looked like a phony to me. They both got in the car. You saw them clearly? Yes, I, I was in that little room right off the kitchen there, see? But where was the car parked? Oh, right about here. Mm hmm They sat there and talked for a minute, and I saw Al start to get out, but Ed grabbed him. He's pretty big. They talked a little while after that. Yeah, and then what happened? Well, that's it. What? They drove off together, and Al never came back. <laughs> The lineup, starring Bill Johnstone as Lieutenant Ben Guthrie and Jack Moyles as Sergeant Pete Carger, was written by E. Jack Newman with music by Eddie Dunstetter. Featured in tonight's cast were Harry Lang, Peter Leeds, Howard McNear, Hal March, Jeanette Nolan, Jack Carroll, and Paula Winslow. The lineup was.